Pokemon Journals Day 1 by Fireblades. After grabbing my starting Pokemon Squirtle and, ne and nicknaming him X Hertz, I had a battle with my rival. I won. And then, after that, I made my way to Viridian City. During Viridian City, I hit the market so to get some Pokeballs, but the marketeer asked me to deliver a parcel to Professor Oak before I could. I humbly agreed. Once I delivered the parcel to Professor Oak, he then bestowed upon me a quest to capture all the Pokemon in the region. I humbly said I would do my best to do that. During um, going on my quest, I decided to pick up the town map from my neighbour. She graciously gave it to me. I was very, very thankful. And now I have made it to Viridian City to Route 2, ready to capture more Pokemon for my team. Day 4 by Fireblades. I went to buy Pokeballs at the market, and then I caught a Ratter as I needed more Pokemon for my team. I then went to Viridian Forest and battled some trainers. I even encountered a Pikachu and added him to my team. However, my Ratter got poisoned while battling some trainers, and I had to rush him to the Pokemon Center so Nurse Joy could heal him. After Nurse Joy healed my Pokemon, I went to the Pokemart to get some items. This was mainly antidotes and potions, because I needed them for the poison. When I came out of the shop, I went back to Viridian Forest to train my Pokemon. Squirtle, who was named X Hertz, learned Bubble. My Ratta, who was named Traku, learned Quick Attack. I then left the forest. I am now in Pewter City, rested and ready to train and grow as a Pokemon trainer. I wonder what new adventures and Pokemon await me. I still need a fire type and a ground type Pokemon for my team. Or maybe a psychic type. I never trained a psychic Pokemon before, so it could be interesting. Day 8 by Fireblades. It has been eight days since I started my Pokemon quest and I have already learned so much. I have grown as a trainer as well. I also won my first gym badge today. Woohoo! It was Brock I faced and I won the Boulder badge too. After winning my badge, I left for Mount Moon. Mount Moon leads to Cerulean City, so I was told. There were a lot of trainers to face, but I managed to make it to Mount Moon. While training in Mount Moon, Exher evolved! I'm so proud of Exher. I even gave him a hug. I then captured a few more Pokemon, but only to store for my Pokedex. While exploring Mount Moon, I found a few members of a gang called Team Rocket. Just who are these people? They battled me, but I beat them. Then, I got given a choice of either the Helix or the Felix Fossil. Just what are these fossils? I took the Helix Fossil. After some more battling and training, I left Mount Moon and was on my way to Cerulean City. But someone called me over and taught Austin805 Mega Punch for free. Two, I was very, very thankful for this. I am now in Cerulean City and staying in the Pokemon Center at the minute. Nurse Joy is very nice to let me do that. I will be spending some time training my Pokemon before I battle Misty next. Day 11. It has now been three days since I arrived in Cerulean City, and I have been training hard. 
I hope my Pokemon are strong enough for Misty's water team. I think I will lead with Austin 508 Pikachu, as he's strong against Misty's water Pokemon. Nurse Joy gave me that heads up. Day 15 by Fireblades. I went to Misty's gym and battled her water Pokemon. I won! Woohoo! She gave me the Castage badge. That's now two badges I have, only six left to go, and then I can go to the Pokemon Championship. I then headed north and met Blue. He challenged me to a Pokemon battle. Blue has grown so much in 11 days. His team is getting stronger every day too, so I cannot stop training, even for a second. Even though Blue's team is strong, I managed to beat him and he gave me something called a fame checker. Then, he told me I should go visit Bill, the Pokemon professor who lived not far from here. There were a lot of trainers to face, but I managed to beat them. And Petit1213, my Pidgey, evolved into a Pidgeotto. I was so proud of him. I also encountered Team Rocket here again. Just what are they doing here anyway? When I got to Bill's, there was no one home, only a clay free. I was about to capture it, when suddenly, it spoke to me. It told me that he was Bill. I didn't believe it at first, but after talking to him and using his computer, he then transformed back into his real person. I believed him after we had a chat. Bill then thanked me by giving me an SS Anne ticket that docks in Vermilion City. Maybe I will check this out soon. Then, I left Bill's to go for the underground passage in Cerulean City. Before going to the Cerulean City passage though, I took a stop at the daycare man just to say hi and to see how he was doing. He offered to raise some of my Pokemon, but I declined as I told him I like to raise my Pokemon by myself. But thank you for the offer. The underground passage was very long and dark. I was also told people lose things there too. I'm checking my bag before I continue just in case I lost anything. Luckily, I didn't lose anything, so I started to make my way to Vermilion City. There were so many trainers here too. It took a while beating them all, but I managed to beat all of the trainers, and my Ratta, Tracu, even evolved into a Raticate. I was so proud of him. I have now made it to Vermilion City. Before I go on the SS Anne, I think I will attempt to win the gym badge here in this city. That's if I can. However, Lieutenant Surge is a strong gym leader and he uses Thunder types too. I need to be careful as X hurts my Squirtle and Petit1213, my Pidgeotto, are both weak to electric type Pokemon. Day 17 by Fireblades. I got on the SSN as Lieutenant Surge's gym was blocked off by a thick tree. I was also told the ship's captain can teach my Pokemon a new move. While I was on the SSN, I was challenged by many trainers, including Blue. It may have been a few days since me and Blue last battled, but his team is so much stronger now. I still won though. When Blue left, I made my way to the captain. Sadly, he was a bit seasick, so I gave him some medicine to help him. He thanked me by giving me the HM cut, which I taught to my Tracu. After leaving the SSN, I made my way to Lieutenant Surge's gym. I could cut the tree down now. Lieutenant Surge was tough and his Raichu is powerful, but I managed to win and I won the Thunder Badge. Only five badges left to go. I then left the gym and headed towards Diglett's Cave. 
After I explored Diglett's cave, I decided to go to the market to sell some of the items I didn't need. Mainly the nugget from Nugget Bridge, the star powder I found, and the X attack I also found. I also bought some Pokeballs, some potions and awakenings, and a few repels. Then left to train in Diglett's cave. After some time, I left Diglett's cave and healed my Pokemon at the Vermilion City Pokemon Center. On the way back to Vermilion City, however, I met one of Professor Oak's aides. He told me someone had a parcel for me in Route 2. I think I will check that out before I go to the next gym. Days 20 and 23 by Firebleeds. Day 20. I decided to take Diglett's cave back to Route 2, as I wanted to capture a Diglett for the Pokedex. The Diglets here are so strong too! I might have to try to train one someday too. Then, I left Diglett's cave to meet Professor Oak Aid on Route 2. When I got to the Professor's Aid, he told me that if I had captured 10 or more Pokemon, he would give me the HM known as Flash. I had 13 Pokemon captured on my Pokedex by this point, so I got the HM Flash and teached it to Austin 508 Pikachu. The aide also told me to go to Rock Tunnel, east of Route 9. I checked my map and then proceeded to Rock Tunnel. I battled some really, really strong trainers on my way to Rock Tunnel, and my Peter1213 even got poisoned during a battle against one of them. It's a good thing I still had a few antidotes left. After winning all the battles in Route 9 and 10, I made it to Rock Tunnel. There was a Pokemon Center here, so I asked Nurse Joy if I could stay here for a few days to train in the, in the Rock Tunnels. She said that was fine, so I proceeded to train in the rock tunnels. After a few hours of training in the rock tunnels, I came out and went back to the Pokemon Center to rest for the night. Day 23 I woke up early to explore rock tunnel, but I ran out of antidotes! Oh no! So I got some more at the market in Cerulean City. After getting the antidotes, I returned to the rock tunnels and captured the matchup! I put the matchup in the storage so Oak can study the Pokemon. I then battled more trainers in the rock tunnels and left to go to Lavender Town. It took a while, oh, but I arrived in Lavender Town. I went to the Pokemon Cemetery as I wanted to pay my respects to all the fallen Pokemon. Blue was here too, and he battled me! In less than a week, Blue grew just as much as I did. I think we are true rivals. Blue put up a good strong fight, and I even saw a new Pokemon he had. It was so cool, but in the end, I still won the battle. I am still in Lavender Town now, but I am leaving soon to explore Kanto more. Day 24. I took my Pokemon to the Lavender Town Pokemon Center after battling Blue. I then proceeded to head down south to Fuchsia City for my next gym badge. I might go to the Safari Zone while I'm there. It might be fun to explore that place. Day 30 by Fireblades after heading south to go to Saffron City, I ran into a big Pokemon blocking the road. It was a Snorlax. I had to turn back and go to Lavender Town to go to Celadon City instead. That was west of Lavender Town. I have never been to Celadon City before, but I hear there is a Pokemon gym there and I need that gym badge. On the way to Celadon City, I was challenged in some Pokemon battles. I even got to try a 2 vs 2 Pokemon battle. That was so fun! I then encountered the guy whose bike was acting up, so I offered to fix it for him. I then continued my journey after fixing his bike. 
when I got to Celadon City. Team Rocket was here. Just what are they up to? And why are they here? I then went to the market and picked up a Thunderstone and a Firestone. I then left the market to explore Celadon City. While exploring Celadon City, I found an Eevee! I decided to add the Eevee to my Pokemon team. And I even nicknamed him Dark Rides 47. I then gave him a Firestone I bought from the market, and he evolved into a Flareon! That was my fire type now sorted unexpectedly. I only need a ground or a psychic type now. I then went to Erica's gym for the rainbow badge. There were a lot of trainers in the gym, so I had to make sure I had prepped first. So I went back to the market. Erica was a tough battle, and her grass types know some good, good moves. But I managed to win, and I earned myself the rainbow badge. That's now half the badges I have. I then left the gym to go to Celadon City's arcade as I saw a Team Rocket member go there, and I think they are up to no good. Days 35 and 36 by Fireblades. Day 35. When I went to Celadon's arcade, I saw a Team Rocket member next to a poster acting suspicious. He battled me, but I won. After the Rocket member left the arcade, I checked out the poster and found a button. When I pressed the button, a secret stairway appeared. Me being curious, I went down the stairs. When I got down the stairs, I was in a big room. There were a lot of Team Rocket members in here too. I think I may have accidentally found their secret hideout. They all battled me, but I won them all. I then met their leader, Giovanni, who told me what Team Rocket do. They steal other people's Pokemon to experiment or use for themselves. That's just not right. Who does that? I now have a new goal as well as becoming a Pokemon Master. I must stop Team Rocket at all costs! Giovanni then challenged me to a Pokemon battle. Giovanni is such a strong trainer, his Kangaskhan nearly wiped out my whole team. Luckily, Austin 508, my Pikachu, managed to win this for me. After beating Giovanni, he had left the building, but he dropped his Silphco scope, which I decided to permanently borrow for myself. I then left to return to Lavender Town as I heard a ghost that wasn't a Pokemon, was haunting the place. I went through an underground passage that goes from Celadon City to Lavender Town. As I was told by the people in Celadon City, it was the fastest way back. It was also very dark in there too. When I got back to Lavender Town, I heard something coming from the Pokemon Tower, so I went to investigate. As I was going through the Pokemon Tower, there were people here acting so strangely, like they were possessed or something. They also battled me, and after I won their battle, they actually forgot everything they just did. That was so weird. Then, a wild ghastly attacked me, but I managed to capture it. That was another Pokemon for my Pokedex. As I got to the top of the tower, the ghost appeared! It turns out, it was just the ghost of a Marowak. My new Silphscope told me that. Even though I didn't want to fight this Marowak, it kept attacking me. So I had no choice but to attack her. At the top of the Pokemon Tower, there were more members of Team Rocket here. I didn't think twice and battled all of them and winning each battle. I then met this guy for, called Mr. Fuji. He told me he was here to calm down Marowak's spirit, and once it was calm enough, he took me 
to his place and gave me a poker flute, which can awaken any sleeping Pokemon. I think I will use it on that Snorlax that was asleep south of here. Before I left to go south of Lavender Town, I decided to visit my friend Volunteer in Lavender Town, as I haven't seen him in over a month now. It was nice to see him. I then left Lavender Town to go to Fuchsia City. As I got to the Snorlax, I used my poker flute to awaken it, but this turned out to be a very bad move. The Snorlax awoke and it got so angry that it went into a mad rampage and wiped out my Pokemon team. It then left to go back to the mountains. Hopefully next time I can be more prepared to battle the Snorlax. It's now getting late. I'm only on Route 13. I'm going to have to set up camp for the night and continue my quest tomorrow. Day 35. End. Day 36. I woke up extra early to continue my journey to Fuchsia City, but I can see a lot of trainers on Route 13 today. The trip to Fuchsia City might take longer than I originally planned. Day 36. End. Days 39 and 40. By Fireblades. Day 39. There were a lot of strong trainers on Route 13, and I even got to do another 2 vs 2 Pokemon battle today. I faced a Squirtle and a Charmander, who were both very, very strong. After some more battling, I went back to Lavender Town to heal my Pokemon at the Pokemon Center, and I also bought some more items at the shop too. While heading back to Route 13, I stopped off to go fishing and found a horsey. I went to capture it, and I actually captured it! Woohoo! That's another Pokemon for my Pokedex. I then continued my journey to Fuchsia City, battling all the trainers who challenged me, and winning all the battles. Then, I finally arrived in Fuchsia City. Now where's that Pokemon Center again? I need to heal my Pokemon. After I eventually healed my Pokemon, I went to the Savari Zone to try and capture more Pokemon for my Pokedex. I managed to capture a Doduo, a male Nidoran, and an Execute. I even found some TMs and a Protein here too. I gave it to Austin508 and then continued to explore the Safari Park. While exploring the Safari Park, I came across two signs. One told me there's a secret house somewhere in the Safari Park, while the other was offering a reward for finding the Warden's teeth. I managed to find the teeth and went to find this secret house that was in the Safari Park. After some time, Exploring, I came across a house in the Safari. I was curious of this house, so I went to explore it. It turns out it was the secret house! I was then told I was the first person to find the secret house since the Safari Park was built and opened. So the person rewarded me with a HM known as Surf. I thanked him and then left to explore the Safari Zone more. While exploring the rest of the Savari, a r wild Rhyhorn attacked me. I went to throw a Savari ball to capture it. I managed to capture it, so that's another Pokemon for my Pokedex. And then I left the Savari Park to go to the Warden's house and return his teeth to him. He thanked me by giving me another HM known as Strength. I thanked um, him for giving me the HM and then left the Wardens to go to Fuchsia City to get my next gym badge. I wonder what kind of Pokemon Koga will have waiting for me. Going to Koga's gym, I saw a lot of trainers. I was low on supplies battling the trainers on Route 3, so I left the gym to resupply on potions and antidotes. I might do some more training while I'm here too. Day 39 end. Day 40. I have resupplied on potions and trained up my team a little more. It's time to go face Koga and check out the Pokemon fan club I've been hearing about so much. However, the fan club is all the way back in Vermilion City, 
so the journey will be very long. Also, I haven't seen Blue for a long time now. I wonder what my rival is actually up to, and I wonder when I'm actually going to be able to battle him next to show off how strong my Pokemon have gotten throughout the month. Day 40 End Days 41, 48, 55 and 56 by Firebleeds Day 41 I went into Koga's gym and battled a lot of trainers who were very, very strong. However, I managed to beat all the trainers and my ex hurts even evolved into his final form, Blastoise. I was so proud of him. Me and ex hurts have both grown a lot on my Pokemon journey. Now it's time to face Koga, the gym leader. Koga's team was very strong, but my newly evolved ex hurts managed to win me the battle, but he got poisoned in the process. I rushed off to the Pokemon Center to heal him and my team. After healing my team, I went back to Vermilion City to check out the fan club. Nothing exciting happened while going back to Vermilion City. I didn't see any new Pokemon, nor did I catch any new Pokemon while fishing. Day 41, end. Day 48. When I got to the fan club, I spoke to the owner and we chatted so much, he apologised for taking so much time that he gave me a bike voucher. Now I can get a bike from Cerulean City's bike shop. However, I will have to go through Diglett's Cave Pew the City and Mount Moon again, so the journey will be very long. I hope I have got everything I need. If not, I'm going to have to go to the shop in Cerulean City first. Day 48 end. Day 55. After going through Diglett's Cave, Pew the City and Mount Moon, I finally arrived at Cerulean City's bike shop and now have a bike. And after cycling around for a bit, I heard a very loud Caillou near the power plant and decided to check it out. After I get some items from the shop, because I think it could be the legendary Pokemon Zapdos. Day 55 End Days 56, 58, 59, 60 and 61 by Fireblades. Day 56. After checking my bag and seeing I was low on Pokeballs, I decided to make my way to Saffron City. As I heard, there was a Pokemon gym there. Zapdos can wait until I resupply on Pokeballs as well. However, I had to go through Rock Tunnel again to get to Saffron City. This Will be good training, I suppose. Day 56. End. Day 58. I finally made it out of Rock Cave and went to Lavender Town. Although I couldn't remember my way, so I had to look at my map. When I saw my map, it turned out I had to go south and back to Fuchsia City. Now I am very glad I got that bike, because it's going to be quicker than running. As I was making my way to Fuchsia City, I got challenged to a Pokemon battle. However, it was nothing my Pokemon couldn't handle. After the battle, I made my way to Fuchsia City to get to Saffron City. Day 58 End Day 59 I finally made it to Fuchsia City, but my journey is still long, and I am very tired from all that walking. I think I will rest up for the night and continue my journey to Saffron City tomorrow. I chose to walk because my bike was out of commission right now, and I needed to get it fixed. Day 59 End Day 60 After resting up, for a few nights, I continued on my way to Saffron City through Route 18. This turned out to be the National Cycling Route to Celadon City. 
However, I had to cycle uphill. This was not fun at all. However, I did get challenged to a Pokemon battle, but it was nothing. My Exerts, Blastoise, my Dracu, my Raticate, and my Darkrai 47, my Flayron, couldn't handle. After my battle, I got to the top of the hill and left the cycling route to only find a Snorlax blocking my way. I went to try and capture it, but it wasn't working. Luckily, the Snorlax fell asleep, so I took this opportunity and raced back to Fuchsia City to buy some Ultra Balls. It was all downhill to Fuchsia City, so it was much faster on my bike. After I got the Ultra Balls, I bought 50 of them, bear in mind. I went back to the Snorlax and tried to capture the Pokemon. And, after some battling, I threw an Ultra Ball and hoped I was capturing the Snorlax. And as luck would have it, I CAPTURED THE SNORLAX! A Pokemon this powerful was added to my team. I he even named him OJT, known as Original Jam Toast. I can see Celadon City now. It's time to go to the Pokemon Center there to heal my Pokemon and possibly battle the Celadon City Gem Leader. I wonder what Pokemon she uses. Day 60 End Day 61 After healing my Pokemon at the Pokemon Center, I am ready to take on the Gym Leader here in Celadon City. Then, off to Saffron City I go. I wonder what Saffron City has waiting for me on my Pokemon adventure. Day 61 End Days 62, 64, 65, and 66. Bye, Fireblades. Day 62. I went to Celadon City's gym, but then I remembered I already had the gym badge. So I left the gym to go to the Pokemon Mansion in Celadon City to get some British tea off a very kind old lady. I then remembered that the guard in Saffron City was thirsty. So I rushed off to the guard who wouldn't let me past to give him the tea. When... I spoke to the guard. He saw I had some tea, so I kindly gave him the tea. Never in my life have I seen anyone chug tea so fast. He chugged that tea like a true spiffing Brit. The guard then thanked me for the tea and allowed me to pass through Saffron City. I wonder what awaits me here in Saffron City. Day 62 End. Day 64. While exploring Saffron City, I saw Team Rocket here! Just what are they doing here anyway? I will have to find out after I finish the fighting dojo here. I hear if you beat everyone at the fighting dojo, you get a very rare Pokemon to keep. I wonder what this Pokemon could be. Only one way to find out. Let's go into the dojo. The dojo was full of trainers who had some very strong Pokemon, but it was nothing that my Peter 1213 couldn't handle. However, the leader used two Pokemon I have never seen before. The first one was called Hitmonlee, who survived a wing attack from my Peter 1213. I was so surprised on that because flying type is super effective against fighting type. This guy must have trained his two Pokemon very well. And speaking of which, what is his second Pokemon anyway? After some battling, I still managed to beat Hitmonlee, although it was very tough. His second Pokemon was another one I've never seen before called Hitmonchan! This Pokemon also survived a wing attack from Peter1213. These Pokemon are sure strong! His Hitmonchan then responded with a move I've never heard before called Ice Punch! I don't know what that move is, but it did a lot of damage to my Peter1213, but he held on and actually finished off his Hitmonchan. After the battle, 
I got to choose one of the two Pokemon, Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan, for winning the fighting dojo. I chose Hitmonchan and then left to heal my Pokemon and rest up for the day. Maybe Nurse Joy knows why Team Rocket is here. Day 64 end. Day 65. After healing my Pokemon, I went to Silphco, as Nurse Joy told me Team Rocket was there and up to something. Luckily, the guard was still asleep. So I snuck past him, and the place was full of Team Rocket. I kid you not, everywhere I turned, Team Rocket was there. I had a lot of battling to do here. I also overheard from two Team Rocket members that there's a key card here to get to the boss, where the Team Rocket boss is. Just who is leading this attack on Silphco? Only one way to find out. Better search for that Silphco card. After a few hours of searching and battling a lot of Team Rocket members, I finally found the key card. So I opened a few doors and found someone who said I should rest up. As much as I didn't want to, I felt my eyes just closing on their own. So I took this opportunity to rest up for the night. Day 65 End Day 66. When I awoke, I left to continue my journey through Silphco, and I saw Blue again! It's been a while since I saw him. We battled straight away. His Alakazam was so strong, but I beat it and the rest of his team with no effort. Blue saw how strong I got and he told me, good luck, then left. I then went to see who the boss was behind this Silphco takeover. It turns out, it was Giovanni himself! I immediately took out my Pokemon and went to battle him straight away. His Nido King did paralyze and nearly faint my Blastoise, but he held on and took out his Nido King and his Rhyhorn too. Giovanni was not happy that I ruined his plans again! and then left, but not before telling me he will be back soon. I then left to heal my Pokemon and go to the gym here, as Team Rocket na was now away from Saffron City, but the gym in Saffron City was full of very strong trainers. Some preparations needed to be made. It's time to go shopping! Day 66 End. Days 68, 69, 70, 75, and 76 by Fireblades. Day 68. After buying some supplies at the market, I rushed off to the gym to challenge the gym leader, and oh boy, it was like a maze in this gym. I was looking for the gym leader by teleporting onto the platforms on the floor while also battling the trainers in each of the rooms too. However, after a lot of battling, I finally found the gym leader and challenged her. Sabrina was a strong psychic trainer and her Pokemon even confused my Darkrai. However, I still managed to beat the Pokemon that confused my Darkrai, but her Alakazam was really strong. It took out my Peter 1213, so I sent out Exerts and what a close match it was! My Exerts nearly fainted after a psychic attack from her Alakazam, but he held on and won me the gym badge. I was so proud of Exerts. Now that's six gym badges I own. My next stop is the power plant because it's time to check out what that Caillou was a while back. Let's heal my Pokemon and set off. After I find the exit, to this maze of a gym. Now I really wish I bought an escape rope. Day 68 end. Day 69. 
After finally managing to get out of the gym and healing my Pokemon, I started my way to the power plant. It wasn't a long journey though, as it was just north from Saffron City to get to Celadon City, and then it was east from Celadon City. When I finally got to the power plant, I was challenged by a Pokemaniac to a Pokemon battle. I did win. I then went into the power plant to find what made that Caillou sound, if it was still here. Day 69, end. Day 70. After exploring the power plant, I could not believe what I saw. I found Zapdos in the power plant. I straight away went to battle him as I wanted to capture Zapdos for my Pokedex. A Pokemon this rare could not be passed up. I got out my X-Hertz and battled Zapdos. It was a long battle and X-Hertz did get paralysed, but I weakened Zapdos enough to throw Ultra Balls at it. However, it kept breaking free. I was about to flee as Zapdos did injure my Pokemon a lot and fainted a few of them. However, I threw one last Ultra Ball and hoped. I was hoping there and as luck would have it. I actually captured the Zapdos. I was so happy. I then left the Pokemon Power Plant really happy and healed my Pokemon at the Pokemon Center in Cerulean City, and then set off to Cinnabar Island for my seventh gym badge. Day 70, end. Day 75. I arrived on Cinnabar Island and immediately went to the Pokemon Center, as Cinnabar Island is south of my hometown, Pallet Town. So I had a long journey to go back to Pallet Town, and I had to ride on the ocean south to get here. There was also a lot of battling and wild Pokemon I had to battle as well. My Pokemon really needed a heal and I needed a rest for the day as I was tired. I think I will ask my brother if I can stay at his while here on Cinnabar Island. Day 75 end day 76 i am rested up and ready to take on the gym leader and get my gym badge here in cinnabar island let's get my seventh gym badge day 76 end days 77 79 80 and 81 by Fire Bleeds. Day 77. The door to Blaine's gym was locked, as Blaine told me that he only lets people in his gym who have beaten the Pokemon Mansion and found his key in there. So, I had no other choice but to rush to the mansion to find the key to the gym. The mansion was very big and full of very useful items. I even found an escape rope while here. There was also switches all across the mansion that opened other doors, some to more items and others to trainers and some thieves. Good thing Officer Jenny was around after I stopped the thieves. I am finding my way around this mansion now. I may be here for a while, so I may as well set up camp and rest up. Day 77 End Day 79. After searching this mansion for a few days and battling even more trainers and thieves, I finally found the key to the gym. So, I used my escape rope that I found in here and healed up my Pokemon and then rushed off to the gym so I could battle Blaine. Day 79. End. Day 80. After I rested up and healed my Pokemon at the Pokemon Center, I went to Blaine's gym, but this gym was full of strong trainers, so I left to make sure I had everything I needed. Potions, full heals, burn heals, things like that. 
Once I knew I had everything I needed, I went into Blaine's gym to properly go to battle the trainers. However, Blaine's gym was very different to other gyms I had faced. It had Pokemon quizzes that I had to answer. If I got it wrong, I battled a trainer. If I got it right, I went to pass through the barrier without battling. However, I wanted to battle the trainers for more experience for my Pokemon. And, honestly, it was a lot more fun that way. After a lot of trainer battlings and a few trips to the Pokemon Center, I finally got to the gym leader Blaine and we started battling. Blaine had a few strong Pokemon on his team and his Arcanine took out my Peter1213 with a move called Fire Blast. That move looks very powerful. However, my ex hurt beat his Arcanine and won me the gym badge. That's now only one badge left to go and then it's the Elite Four. It's time to go back to Viridian City for the final gym badge because I've heard the gym leader is now back in Viridian City taking on new challengers. Day 80 end. Day 81. When I was leaving Blaine's gym, I ran into Bill, who asked me for some help. I told him I could help, and I could put this other gym on hold for a moment while I help him. So, we went on a boat, and went to a place called Island One. Strange name for an island, but that's fine with me. I also met a guy named Cleo, who also needed me to go to Island Two to get a gadget off his friend to help him link his PC to Bill's PC in Kanto. I agreed to this and got a ticket that takes me to three islands. This is interesting, very interesting. I actually cannot wait to explore these islands tomorrow. Day 81, end. Day 82. After resting up and healing my Pokemon, I took some time to explore the island and even captured a few new Pokemon for my decks. The Pokemon I caught were a Ponita, Meowth, and a Pharaoh. I am now going to head north to continue my exploration because I heard there are some really strong Pokemon up in Mount Ember. Day 82 End Days 90 92, 93, 94, 95, 100, and 101 by Fireblades. Day 90. After spending five days traveling this island and battling all the trainers I saw, I found a sign near a cave that said Ember Spa ahead. Me being curious, I went into the cave to check it out. Ember Spa was such a lovely warm place that as soon as I entered, I felt so relaxed. I also spoke to an elderly guy, and as it turned out, he made this place over one million years ago, as this place also holds the Fountain of Youth. I didn't believe it at first until he showed me. He also told me to try his hot springs, and he told me that my Pokemon could as well, so... I did, and I felt so relaxed that I took out my Pokemon, and my Pokemon even felt so relaxed, they even healed my Pokemon too. After a while, I got out the hot springs, and dried, and continued my quest, refreshed, and so relaxed. Day 90, end. Day 92. After exploring this island for a bit, I went back to town via my pizza and took the boat to Island 2. Good name for an island, I will admit. Once I got there, I explored this island and spoke to a guy who was waiting for his lunch from his daughter. But his daughter was lost on Island 3 and they, he asked me to help look for her, so I offered to help look. Day... 92, end. Day 93. 
before I set off to Island 3, someone stopped me and taught my Blastoise Hydro Cannon! This opportunity I did not pass up. Then I thanked him and left for Island 3. Day 93 end. Day 94. I arrived on Island 3 only to find a gang of bikers causing trouble for the people there. Their leader also challenged me to a Pokemon battle. I did not hesitate to accept and I even won the battle and all of the bikers cleared off after I beat the leader. After that I went searching for the guy's daughter from Island 2 because I heard he, she was in the woods on Island 3. Day 94 end. Day 95. I was searching the forest, and then, after a while of searching, I found the guy's daughter. But she was crying very, very loudly and so much. It turns out, a Hypno was scaring her to the point where she was in tears. She was that scared, she was even crying out for her dad. This really broke my heart. So, I got out my OJT and battled the Hypno, and then the Hypno fleed. She was very thankful for this, and we got her home safely. Her dad was very grateful, and even gave me a moonstone. A, mo a moonstone of all things. Where did he get a moonstone from, I wonder? I'm gonna worry about that later. But I then left to talk to Bill again, and then go to Mount Ember. Day 95, end. Day 100. After spending some time on this island, I decided to hit Mount Ember first because Bill was still a little bit busy. And I also was told another legendary Pokemon lives there, and I wanted that legendary for my Pokedex. Mount Ember was a very long journey with many, many Pokemon battles. However, I made it to the top, and I saw the legendary Firebird, Moltres! This was amazing, I wasted no time, and I battled Moltres so I could capture it. And it took nearly 60 Ultra Balls, but I did eventually capture it. I then left to talk to Bill, because he was finally finished, and then left the islands, so I could finally battle the last gym leader. Day 100, end. Day... 101. I am now back in Kanto, ready to take on the final gym leader. But who could this gym leader be? Because I have no knowledge on who this is. No one has battled him before, but I have heard rumours that he could use ground-type Pokemon. But there's only one way to find out. Day 101. End. Days 102, 103, 104, and 110 by Firebleeds. Day 102. I was told the gym leader returned from holiday and was ready to face challenges again at Viridian City's gym. So I hopped on my Peter 1213 and rushed off to Viridian City's gym to challenge the gym leader. Viridian City's gym looked really cool, and there were a lot of powerful trainers to face, but after a few trips to the Pokemon Center, I managed to beat all the trainers and get to the gym leader, who was no other than Giovanni himself. He was very impressed of how strong I was and how I managed to beat him loads, so he gave me an offer to battle him, and if he won, I would have to join Team Rocket, and if I won, he would disband Team Rocket. Knowing the risks, I accepted this challenge, and I actually won. Not only did I get the Earth Badge, but I finally managed to disband Team Rocket and stop their reign on Kanto. Ember's gonna be so proud of me when I go back home and tell her, then, I took my gym badge off Giovanni and left for the Elite Four, because that was now all eight gym badges. Time to make my way to Victory Road, day 102, 
end. Day 103. While making my way to the Elite Four, I ran into Blue, who challenged me to a Pokemon battle. He was a lot stronger, but I did win. However, my Austin 508, my Pikachu, fainted from a Hydro Pump that he did from his Gyarados. So, I healed him up and continued my way to the Elite Four, but thinking to myself, I should probably train before I battle the Elite Four. Day... 103, end. Day 104. A guy stopped me while I was going to the Elite Four, and he told me I needed the Boulder Badge, Brock's Badge, from Pewter City. I pulled it out and showed it him, but he also told me this was a new system, and I was going to be stopped by seven other guards to make sure I had all seven other badges, as well as this one. This... Plus the mountains I have to climb to get to the Elite Four will make this a very, very long day for me. Day 104. End. Day 110. After six days of finding my way through Victory Road Mountain, I finally made it to the Pokemon League. I'm going to make sure I am prepared to battle the Elite Four. So, I have healed all of my Pokemon, stored all the items I didn't want to sell, sold every single item I did not need, and spent most of my money on healing items for the Elite Four. I am also going to train all my Pokemon on the Victory Road Mountain because I know there are some powerful Pokemon there and the river leading to Victory Road Mountain also had some strong Pokemon there when I was sailing up there. I might train my Pokemon there too before I hit the Elite Four. Day 110 End Day 117. I spent a week training my Pokemon for the Elite Four, and I believe my Pokemon are now strong enough to battle the Elite Four. They're all level 60. So, I made my way into the arena to challenge the Elite Four. The first of the Elite Four was Loreali, who was an ice water trainer. She had very, very strong Pokemon, and my Austin 508 fainted from her Slowbro riding the waves and using Surf. However, I managed to beat her with OJT with his Hyper Beam. I then healed my team to move on to the next member of the Elite Four, Bruno. Now, Bruno's team was actually pretty strong, and I'm sure he had a shiny Machamp, but I did manage to beat him very quickly, and I went on to face my next challenger, Agatha. Agatha's Pokemon were also very strong too. Her Haunter even survived a Flamethrower. This actually surprised me, as not even her Gengar could survive my Dark Rise Flamethrower. I did win in the end, but Agatha taught me a huge lesson that sometimes even Pokemon that are not fully evolved can be very, very strong. After realising this, I made my way to the final Elite Four member, Lance, after healing up all of my team. Lance was possibly the strongest of the Elite Four. He had a really strong Pokemon team that were mainly Dragon types. His Gyarados almost fainted my Austin, one of his Dragonites fainted my X-Hurt, and almost fainted my Peter1213. Luckily, he held on so I could heal him. And his Dragonite actually took himself out from confusion. That was a very, very lucky battle. And after some more battling, I actually managed to beat Lance. I was actually shocked and beating him because his team nearly took out my Pokemon. I thought I had become the Pokemon champion at this point. But Lance had told me I had one more battle. And it was against Blue. Wait, Blue actually beat all the Pokemon League and the Elite Four? I've got to battle him because he must have gotten so strong since we last battled. And boy, was I right. Blue has gotten so strong since I last battled him. 
His alakazam not only fainted my Peter, but also my Darkrai and my excerpts as well. It's a good thing I stocked up on revives and potions, though. After I healed my team, OJT beat alakazam with a headbutt, which was awesome. And after some more battles, I actually beat Blue and became the Pokemon Champion of Kanto! Blue was very upset that he lost. But he managed to accept it in the end, and left for his own Pokemon adventure. Oak then congratulated me on becoming the Pokemon champion. My Pokemon team then went into the Hall of Fame, and I was so proud of all of my Pokemon. I could not have done this without my Pokemon team. After becoming the champion, what is there for me to do exactly in Kanto? Well, I heard that someone on the islands needs my help again, with something involving a sapphire and a ruby. And I also heard there's a very strong Pokemon in a cave near Cerulean City. So I set off to follow up on these leads. Day 117 End. Day 124. A week has passed since I became the Pokemon Champion of Kanto. I am now back at home preparing for my next journey. I decided to follow up on my lead and go to the Seafoam Island Caves, as I was told there was a very rare Pokemon that lives here, and me being me, I wanted to capture it for the Pokedex, so... After I gathered all the supplies I needed from my storage, I set off to Fuchsia City to go to the market to buy some Ultra Balls. I bought as many as I could, as I felt like I was going to need them. I then went down to Fuchsia City's beach to ride the waves southwest down the ocean to the Seafoam Islands to check out the caves. Day 124 End Day 125 I arrived at the Seafoam Island and wasted no time going into the cave. It was actually really big with a lot of puzzles I had to solve and even a few items I could collect. But after a lot of exploring and puzzles, I finally made my way to the bottom of the cave and I actually saw a legendary Pokemon that was known as Articuno. This Pokemon just stared at me for a moment before deciding to battle me. I think it knew I caught Zapdos and Moltres and was proud I could tame them, so it decided to see if I was worthy of capturing him. Battling Articuno was a tough battle, but once I weakened Articuno enough, I threw my Ultra Balls. It took me somewhere around 50 to 65 Ultra Balls, but I finally captured the Articuno. I then left the Seafoam Island to Vermilion City with a proud smile on my face, knowing I've just captured all three legendary birds of Kanto. Ember's gonna be so proud of me when I go back. Also, Celio needed my help around the islands again. I wonder what he needs. Time to hop on the ferry and go to Island 1 and find out. Day... 125 end day 126 i arrived at the dock in vermilion city just in time for the ferry so i got on and left for the island one again when i arrived on the island i went straight to celio and see what he wanted it turns out he needed a ruby that was somewhere in Mount Ember and a sapphire that was somewhere on the other four islands. He needed them so we could link this region up with the Hoenn region. You know, I never knew there was more regions than Kanto. I might actually have to go and explore them after I finished up here. But that could take me a few years to do because I still want to train in Kanto for a while too. I then... Set off to Mount Ember in search for the ruby that Celio wanted while thinking about these regions. Day 126. End. Day 127. 
Once I made it to Mount Ember, I saw some Team Rocket members. I thought they were disbanded, but they are a big criminal organization, so I'm guessing some of them didn't get the memo. While they were speaking, I overheard them having a hideout somewhere on the islands, and there were two passwords for it. I overheard the first password, which was Goldeen Need Logs, but one of them spotted me before I could get the other password. I had to battle them. I did win the battles, and they just left. I don't know why they just left, but there was a cave here, so I entered the cave because I was very curious on what was in the cave. The cave was full of puzzles, some Pokemon I have never ever seen before, and some ruins that had some dots on them. I actually didn't know what it meant, but eventually I did find the ruby here, so I picked it up and just left the cave and returned to see Leo. He thanked me for getting the ruby and then gave me a rainbow pass to explore the other islands for the sapphire, so I decided to go to Island 4 first, because that's the island I haven't been to yet. Once I arrived at Island 4, I ran into Blue. He didn't want to battle, but he did tell me a breeder was on this island and that he had a Pokemon egg. I might just go see the breeders who collect this egg after I'm done looking for the sapphire. Blue then left the island, so I decided to explore the island. I found a market, so I went to the market and bought as many Max Repels as I could as I knew I was going to need them. I then went to the Pokemon Center to rest up for the day because Nurse Joy said I could. Day 127 and day 128. I found a cave while exploring Island 4, so I went in the cave and explored around. It was actually really cold in this cave, and it was full of items, new Pokemon, again, I have never seen before, and even a HM that contained Waterfall. This was interesting, so I taught the Waterfall to Exerts. I then found Lorielli with some more Team Rocket members. Just how many Team Rocket members weren't disbanded or didn't get the memo? Me and Lorielli had to battle the members, but we did win the fights, and then they left. I'm not sure what they're doing around here, but hopefully we will soon find out. I then went back to the Pokemon Center to rest up for the day, as the Sapphire was nowhere on this island, so... I think I'm going to Island 5 tomorrow to look there. Day 128 End Day 129. I woke up early and set off to the docks on Island 4 to catch the ferry to Island 5. It did take a long time to get to Island 5, but I'm finally here. So, I set off to look for the Sapphire on this island. There were even more Team Rockets here who I had to battle, but I won every single battle. I did not find the Sapphire here. But, I did find Team Rocket's hidden warehouse. I didn't have both passwords though, so I had to come back later when I had both passwords. I ended up going to Island 6 on the ferry to continue my search to for the Sapphire. The ferry ride to Island 6 is going to be long though. I think I'm going to get some sleep on the ferry. That way, I'm rested for Island 6. Day 129 End. Day 130. I arrived on Island 6, rested and ready to find the Sapphire. I saw a Pokemon Center here too, and I even saw Blue again. He didn't want to battle me again, but he did ask me how my Pokedex was going, and he even told me that there was a gemstone in a cave somewhere on this island. I knew that it was the sapphire he was on about. He then left, so I set off to find this sapphire on this island. I had to battle some people, and I even found an item too. I also found even more new Pokemon I've never seen before, so I captured them for Professor Oak. After some travelling, I found a cave that I had to cut open with the help of Draku. Once it opened, I entered the cave and found another pillar with a few dots on. It took me a while to figure it out, but I managed to finally get the code. And at the bottom of this cave, I finally found the sapphire after all this searching! 
I needed to thank Blue for giving me this tip when I next see him. But, as I was just about to take the sapphire, someone from Team Rocket just took it, gave me the password for the warehouse, which was yeah, nah, chancy, and pretty much said, Fuck you, I'm selling this, and there's nothing you can do about it, Fire Red. And he just left. Yeah, I just ran straight back to the ferry to Island 5 to go to the Team Rocket hideout. I even brought an express ticket, which gets me there quicker. And once I arrived at Team Rocket's warehouse, I put both passwords in and entered this warehouse. I didn't realise how big it would be. But that's not going to stop me from getting this sapphire back! Day 130 end. Day 131. I went through every route, battling every Team Rocket member I saw. Then I found him. I found the guy who just took the sapphire. He told me he almost managed to sell the sapphire, but I just did not care. I just took that sapphire from him, slapped him hard in the face, and then just left with a massive smile on my face. I then returned to Island 1 to give the sapphire to Cleo. Once he got it, he managed to link the Hoenn region with the Kanto region. He finally thanked me for all my work, and then he told me something about a very powerful and dangerous Pokemon in the caves near Cerulean City that was sleeping, but it has the power to destroy the entire world if someone doesn't stop it. I then told him, let me try. I think I might be able to capture it and seal it away. He then had a very long thought about it, but he did agree, and he did even agree that I had some unique talent with Pokemon, so he told me the location of the cave, which was in Cerulean City, not too far. He then also told me he would let the guards know to let me in. I thanked him and set off for the Cerulean City cave. Day 131 end. Day 132. I'm finally back in Vermilion City, but I immediately set off to Cerulean City for its cave by flying on my Peter 1213. Once I arrived at Cerulean City, I set off to go to the river to go to the cave, but a wild Abra attacked me before I got to the river. I just threw an Ultra Ball at it though, because I needed it for my Pokedex, otherwise it was going to teleport away. I did! Manage to capture it as well. So that's one more Pokemon for my Pokedex, and I managed to continue my journey to the Cerulean Caves. Once I arrived at this cave, I went straight in, but this cave was even bigger than I expected. The journey through this cave is going to take me a day or two, but I really need to stop this Pokemon. This Pokemon is so powerful and has the potential to destroy the world, and I can't let that happen. I trust my Pokemon are powerful enough to take on this big threat. However, I am unsure if I am able to navigate through these caves. Day 132. End. Day 134. After two days of exploring this cave, picking up items, and even capturing a Kadabra for my Pokedex, and exploring a small maze that was even in this cave, I found a ladder that was leading down a river that held this Pokemon threatening the world. It just looked at me with a lot of rage, and it did not hesitate to attack me without mercy. I was really scared dodging its attacks, but Austin immediately came out of his Pokeball in a violent rage to defend me, but I have never ever seen Austin this angry before. He struck that Pokemon with the biggest and most powerful thunder I have ever seen in my life that seriously injured the Pokemon and even paralyzed it. I had taken this chance. I immediately took the Master Ball and threw it at this Pokemon. The Master Ball did its job and kept the Pokemon contained. I even got its data and it was called Mewtwo. It was a clone of Mew. The Pokedex even told me that this Pokemon was created by humans for war and destruction. 
It had enough power to destroy stars and planets and galaxies. Knowing how dangerous this Pokemon is, I sent Professor Oak a note with this Master Ball, telling him to never open this Master Ball, or the universe could be at stake itself. He understood immediately, and sealed it in a vault far, far away. I finally left the cave, and went home, as my journey to be the champion of Kanto was done, and I even saved the world in progress. However, my true journey is now not complete. Now that I know there is a Hoenn region, I plan to go there someday and become the champion of that region too. I think before I go to Hoenn, however, I'm going to keep training in Kanto for a few years before I set off for my journeys to be the best like no one ever was in the Hoenn region. However, in order to go to the Hoenn region, I have been told that there's a place called Johto I'm going to have to go through first. I wonder what awaits me in Johto. Day 134. End. It has been three years since I last updated this journal, and my mum now lives in Johto, who I'm going to visit. I think she lives in New Bark Town, was it? So it's not a far journey. I'm also thinking of changing my clothes once I get there too, because I'm thinking about exploring Johto while I'm there as well. Also, I'm not allowed to take my Kanto Pokemon to Johto, so I've left him with Professor Oak while I make my way to Johto. Also, I wonder what new Pokemon will be there for me, because I am a Pokemon trainer, and I have been told to go to Professor Elm Birch, who lives in New Barktown, to get a new Johto starter. I guess there's only one way to find out. Time to go to Johto!